Technomancer for zero point fuel. Uh, I've been getting a few questions about uh, my drill bank there and um, I wanted to cover this in a video specifically for this so when people it'll be tagged right so when they search YouTube they'll find it so what I'm doing here is I have a, a battery um, that will not take a charge anymore it'll still run a little bit but it won't charge and when you put it on the charger if you see on the charger here it says yellow and green indicate soft start or defective battery well when you put this battery on here it will not charge it could sit there for 24 hours and it might go up a volt just from being the current inducing into the battery but um, what's really happening here is this is a NICAD and uh, a lot of the new lithium ions just don't apply to those type of batteries this is a NICAD battery and what happens is there's like a little cobweb of material that's shorting the battery it's across the the, the inside the cell and there's no way a conventional charger is going to repair that and uh, uh, John Bedini designed a pulse motor that is excellent for that and um, I've been using this pulse motor for years to charge my batteries and uh, you can actually repair this type of battery that will not take a charge any longer by pulse charging it and even after you pulse charged it you can repair it to the point where this charger will work on it again uh, most of my batteries though I I pulse charge them but I do have these chargers sitting around um, you know I'm trying to shoot video or something I can't really charge my tools with a spinning high-speed motor running in the background so I use them once in a while just to top the battery off because they do tend to charge a little higher with the pulse motor but a lot of that high-end charge is fluff it, it charges the battery perfect the batteries work well I use them all the time like that but every once in a while I do put them on the conventional charger to uh, kind of top that battery off and get a good charge because they don't even get warm when you charge them with a pulse charger so I want to go over this little mini charger a little bit it's a single pulse charger it has when one coil fires there's only one trigger all three of these coils fire and uh, that creates a large transient spike and that spike can break down those little cobwebs that form to short the battery and stop it from getting a charge um, so what will happen it'll, it'll go down pretty slow but it, it'll go down uh, and be dead eventually I put it on there a little bit to be sure so that's why there's a little charge in it but it hasn't been conditioned yet so what I have is this is my pulse my mini it's a pulse charger it uses neodymium magnets and it's using five five chips five circuits divided over these three coils one of them has a trigger so it doesn't have a, a lead for that I used one of the wires for a trigger wire so what I have is a, a just a standard transformer I think it came out of a backup power supply running to a bridge rectifier and then these came out of if I'm not mistaken an old stereo the capacitors they add a little punch it's not really required it's something I start doing and it, it seems to help you know, it definitely helps with the how fast the motor runs <laughs> but uh, it's debatable whether you really need the caps on the that power supply but this is my power supply I could hook it up to batteries and do the same thing but because I use this as a charger all the time uh, it's just easier to have a, a uninterrupted power power supply to allow me to do that on a constant basis so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the voltage in this uh, battery and well, it's actually fairly high now just running it a little bit on it tended to raise it up quite a bit so 
basically it's showing nine volts. It's a 14 volt battery. But when you plug it on the charger, it, it doesn't charge. Defective battery. Soft start or defective battery. So it's not taking a charge by the conventional charger. What should be lighting up is this red light sitting at 9 volts. It should actually just pick it up and charge it and it's not doing that. So what we're going to do here is put this on this charger. The hard thing here is now how am I going to connect a connection to that battery without damaging the battery. And uh, thanks to Mr. Bedini we got the solution. Um, what you do here is you take some old pieces of magnet and you stick them to your connections. Now not all connections are, will do that but most of them will. Make sure your polarity is right. And there you go. Now you got to be real careful when you're using a pulse motor because if that slips off of that connection you're in a world of hurt because it will blow your chips on your motor. And uh, I tried using the neons on this. I no longer use neons. If you guys know what I'm talking about, the NE2s, they never really saved the chip. Maybe once or twice. And I think it's more on accident than anything. So I stopped putting the neons on there. Now I could put a capacitor uh, to where it would charge the capacitor real quick, but it could cause the capacitor to explode. So. Uh, I just I'm just real careful when I'm charging that I don't knock the connection off because this is not a secure connection and I don't do it that often most of the time I charge it with a more secure connection but in this case that's what I'm going to show you is how to charge this this way so right now we're going to hook the meter up and yeah, you, you can see it's up a little bit because I was, this is the second take, so sorry guys. Um, Alright, so now we're set to charge the, charge the battery. Um, it's going to take a while to, con to uh, allow this battery to start taking a charge in a conventional way, so... Um, We'll have to run it a while. I'll have to come back and show you after it's been conditioned. So let's get this thing going here. Okay, now you can see how quickly it starts to charge. Okay, while that's charging, I wanted to show you this here. This this is uh, one of the chargers I come up with. This is part of a conventional charger. Um, the charger wasn't working, and I wanted a way to charge these batteries with a more secure connection. So what I did is I used that part, and then just created a way to connect that to my motor. And that way, that connection is not going to come off there, and I'm not going to be blowing chips. Because the connection slips off, it's going to blow the chip. It's a little earlier version of that. It's a little hacked up, but um, it does the same thing. It's the the guts aren't connected. I pulled the transformer out. I think I used it in something else even, but it has a banana plug on it as well. And I can hook these in parallel and charge. So long as the voltage is the same, I can charge a few of these batteries this way. Now the the real trick is you have to do it when you're working working in the area. You don't want to walk off and leave this thing running. If you blow a chip or you forget it will superheat that battery and melt it down. I've had it happen. I just forgot what I was doing and left it. And the thing was so hot I was afraid it was going to burst into flames. I had to take it, and <laughs> take it out of the, the room and it also can release toxic chemicals when it superheats 
it can cause the battery to expand and liquefy and release nasty chemicals like cadmium and other things so you don't want to do that you don't want this to charge I'm sorry about that it's going a little fast and vibrating you don't want to charge a battery um, beyond its limit by more than three or four volts most of the time I let them charge if it's 18 volt I don't usually go above 23 volts It'll usually go up to 23 volts and it'll start coming down. And when it reaches its voltage again, or starts to get warm, I pull the battery. And that's usually enough for a day or two's worth of use. And here you go, this just hit 14 volts. And you see how fast it's climbing now? Uh, it might actually take a charge now. So I'm gonna pull it and, and we're gonna check it because that is climbing really fast. So pull this off of here and we're gonna see if this will take a charge now remember this thing was giving me a yellow light it says like a defective battery now because it climbs so fast right there I'm pretty sure I've corrected the battery so there you go this is Technomancer for zero point fuel signing out